Hi everyone. InfoSemantics has just released a groundbreaking update for the Interactive Master widget with two major features that allow you to be even more creative with Adobe Captivate eLearning. The first new feature is the ability to add Captivate user or system variables as slave objects. This allows the master widget to work with a wider range of widgets, allows you to influence quiz scoring with advanced actions and do much much more. The second feature is one that Captivate users have been requesting for years, partial scoring. In other words, the master widget can report a different score to the quiz depending on how the user fared in an interaction. Let's take a look at an example which uses both these features. We're going to create a multiple answer question using the master widget and the checkboxes enhanced widget by our good friend and fellow widget developer Jim Likelider from CaptivateDev.com. If you haven't got either of these widgets yet, check the description for links to the websites where you can obtain them. For this multiple answer question, the participant is given a list of food items and must select which ones are fruits. We'll use the checkboxes widget to create the list of foods and the interactive master widget to report a different score to the quiz depending on the answers chosen by the user. For starters, we'll add a checkboxes widget. Its property dialog opens for us to configure some settings. In the top text area, we will write the answers to the question, each separated by a comma. This list will become the checkboxes group. This widget is a static widget, not an interactive widget like the master widget. This means it doesn't report a success failure criteria. Instead, it links each checkbox to a Captivate user variable and updates the value in the variable when the checkbox is selected. So we'll write a corresponding list of Captivate user variables in the next field, one variable for each answer option. We will skip the formatting options and click OK to save our settings. Next, we need to create those user variables the widget is expecting to update. So we'll go to Project, Variables, and create the variables with the same names as specified in the widget. So that we understand how the checkboxes update the Captivate variables, we'll add a caption, list the variables in it, and test the movie. Now, initially, the caption doesn't show anything. This is because the variables are empty. However, when we select a checkbox, its text appears in the relevant variable. So when a checkbox is selected, its variable has a value. But when it's deselected, the variable is empty. Good news. That's the interaction part done. However, like I said earlier, this widget doesn't report success or failure, which also means it can't report to the quiz. Here's where the master widget comes in. It can report a score on behalf of the checkboxes widget. How? By listening to these Captivate variables. Let's add a master widget and add those user variables as slave objects. By the way, make sure there are no objects in the movie that share the same name as any Captivate variables, as this could potentially cause conflict. The widget will warn you if there's any risk of this. Normally, the master widget listens for success failure as reported by interactive objects. and Captivate variables don't report success or failure because they're not set up to do that. So we need to specify how the master widget evaluates a variable as being in a success or failure condition. This is done in the miscellaneous section under the Captivate variable slave options heading. There are currently two methods of determining a Captivate variable success or failure. The first looks at what the value of the variable is. If it's yes, true, one, etc., then the variable is successful. However, if it's no, false, or zero, then it will be considered as a fail. The next method considers the variable as a success if it contains anything at all, and a failure if it's empty. This second option is the best match for the way the checkboxes widget works with Captivate variables, so we'll choose this one. Now, whenever a checkbox is selected, its corresponding variable will be considered successful because it has a value, and when it's not selected, the variable will be considered a failure because it's empty. Now let's jump back to the scoring section. Here we can give each answer an individual score. We'll give the success for each fruit a score of 2, and the success for each non-fruit a score of negative 2. 
For each correct answer, the user gets two points, and for each incorrect answer, they lose two points. So if the participant selects all five fruits, they get ten points. However, if they mistakenly select gravy as well, two points will be deducted from the widget's internal score, leaving them with eight points instead of ten. Next, we'll jump to the success failure section and choose based on passing score. Here we pick a threshold score. If the master widget's internal score is above the threshold, it will report success, which it must do. Otherwise, no score will be reported to the quiz. If the score is below this threshold, then it will report failure, and no score will be reported to the quiz.、Uh, let's set the passing score to zero. As a last thing, we'll jump to evaluate and set up the widget to perform the evaluation when we click the submit caption. Click OK to save and exit the widget properties dialog. Finally, we'll turn on quiz reporting for the widget and set it to report a score of ten points. As you'll see later, the widget can vary this score. Let's test the question. If we choose all five fruits and submit the question, then we get success and we get ten points. Yay! However, if we go back and do the question again, this time picking just one fruit, then we still get success because the score inside the widget is two, which is above our threshold score of zero. However, when we get to the quiz results slide, we'd find that we got the same score of ten points as when we answered the question perfectly with all five fruits. It would be great. If we could get scores between zero and ten by having the widget's internal score override those fixed ten points that we set up here in the reporting accordion, well, with the new master widget, you can do just that. Open the master widget's properties again and jump back to the scoring section. You may have noticed last time we were here the new score output options. We'll check use this score to override reported score. Which means the internal score of the widget will now be reported in place of the external captivate score. Click OK to exit, and let's try this again. We'll select two fruits, submit the question, and now when we get to the quiz results slide, we have four points instead of ten. Let's try it again and get four right and one wrong. This time the score is eight minus two, which equals an end score of six. There you go. Partial scoring and captivate variable slaves with the master widget. Before we conclude, there's a little extra information you might like to know. The quiz will consider zero as being the minimum score the widget can report, and however many points you set up in the widget's reporting accordion as the widget's maximum score. However, the master widget allows you to report scores both above the maximum or below the minimum. If you enable out-of-range reporting, then the widget score won't be topped off at ten or bottom out at zero. Be warned, however, this can lead to quiz scores above one hundred percent or below zero percent, which, although being hilarious, is not considered funny by certain LMSs that may only accept scores between zero and one hundred percent. Also, please be aware that the widget will only report a score to the quiz when it's successful. If it reports failure, its score defaults to zero points. So, if I choose all the non-fruits in the question, the quiz would not have a score of negative ten because the widget simply reported failure. However, if I lowered the threshold to negative ten, then the widget could report a negative score and still be considered successful. The new features in the interactive master widget allow you to finally have partial scoring. And use captivate variables to affect the quiz score. So I encourage you all to update your master widgets and start playing. Thanks for watching.